Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 14 for chapter 3. We continue our study on non-homogeneous equations. In this video, we focus our attention to the case where the source term is a polynomial. Let's get started with an example. So here we want to find the general solution for this equation here, where um, the left hand side is a typical um, second order equation with constant coefficient, and the right hand side, this is the function we call g of t, is the polynomial. Here we have chosen it to be 3t squared plus 2. Okay, so the first step in finding the general solution was to solve the homogeneous equation. So set the right hand side to be zero and solve for that and find the um, the roots of the characteristic equation and form the general solution. Here if you do that and you will easily find um, the two roots is negative one and four and therefore you have a linear combination of two exponential functions. Okay, so I skipped the bit detail because this step we are very familiar with. Now come the tricky part, that is to find one particular solution for the non-homogeneous equation. So let's take a look at the right hand side. G here is a polynomial of degree 2. And we want some function that after taking derivatives, becomes a polynomial. And then we know that in a polynomial, if you differentiate it, it becomes still a polynomial, but with different degrees and different coefficients. So with that thought in mind, we will now try to guess a solution or seek a solution, a particular solution in the same form as G. That is, I will seek a polynomial of degree 2. Okay, so capital Y, the one I'm seeking now is capital A T squared plus capital B T plus capital C, where the constants capital A, B, and C are to be fitted such that this becomes a solution for the non homogeneous equation. Okay, then the next step is to plug in the capital Y into the non-homogeneous equation and set it to be equal sign and find the conditions or constraints for these coefficients. And we see that we'll need the derivatives and let's differentiate. So I differentiate Y once in T, I'll get 2AT plus B and I differentiate this one more time to get the second derivative, then I see I just get 2a. Now we are ready to plug them in into the um, equation. So y double prime is 2a, that's what we put here, minus 3y prime, so minus 3. This guy here is the y prime. Okay, so um, this is the y prime and the minus 4y, so minus 4y, y is copied down here. So this is the left hand side. And we see that um, it's a polynomial of t, so let's collect the like terms. So collect all the terms containing t squared. We see that we have just one term, so we have that. And then second, let's collect terms with t. Then we see we have two terms. One is this with the negative 6a, and the other is negative 4bt. So okay, take the t out, we collect the constants here. And then the last term is the constant term. So we see we have a 2a here, and then we have a negative 3b here, and then we have a negative 4c. So we collect them here. And then this shall equal to the right hand side, which is 3t squared plus 2. So basically, um, we have found an equation 
that must hold for our choices of the constant a capital a capital b and capital c okay so i block it out in red and this is actually the the equation that must hold okay um i repeated that equation here on the top so this equation must hold for any values of t and we see that the left hand side is a polynomial of degree 2 in t so we can compare the the coefficient terms of t square and t and the constant and they must match both sides of the equation must match each other okay so let's look at the terms t square on the left hand side i get negative 4a in front of it and the right hand side is 3 so i get an equation that must hold and let's just write that out first okay and then the second term is the term with t which is negative 6a plus 4b in the bracket and the t term is not on the right hand side which means this term must be zero and finally and the constant term here must match the constant term therefore we have that so we see we have three unknowns a b and c and we have three equations and they are linear equations of the unknown and we know how to solve them and in fact um, we are rather lucky here that this system is triangular in the sense that we can just solve it sequentially so the first equation contains only a we can immediately solve for a a is negative 3 over 4 then we can plug that a value into the second equation and now b is the only unknown and you can easily solve it for b once you have both a and b then you can put their values in this third equation and c becomes the only unknown and you can solve for it and you will find the c okay i'm a bit brief here you may pause and work out the details if you like okay then we can put in the value a b and c and find out the um, particular solution is this where here is the a value and there's a b and here is a c okay so to summarize we see that our guess works quite well that is if the right hand side g is a polynomial of certain degree then we would guess the particular solution to be the same form that is also a polynomial of the same degree and it seems to work very well in this example but you know life is not that simple life is complicated because there are many cases so in some cases sometimes this guess does not work so let's take a look okay so now we want to find the particular solution for this equation y double prime minus 3y prime equals 3t squared plus 2 okay it, the g is the same and the left hand side is slightly different and uh, if you um have a sharp eyesight or very sensitive to changes you would notice that on the left hand side there is one term that's missing that is the y term y to the zero order of derivative is not available here so um, what consequence would that lead to we can try to guess in the same way as the previous example that is a particular example also um, the same form as the g term so a second order polynomial a t squared plus b t plus c and if you plug that in you will quickly see that it won't work why um well if you um differentiate y prime and then y double prime if you differentiate y prime then the highest power term will be t and then for y double prime the highest power term will be it will be a constant okay so these two terms you add them up you will not have the term containing t square you can quickly work out this detail it's very easy to verify 
And then on the right hand side, there is a t squared, so the equation will never hold. So, what is the reason for this? Well, that is exactly caused by the lack of the y term. If you shall have the y term, then the t squared term is present. Okay, then um, let's do a new try. What a new form shall we try? So we have seen that in the past it works very well um, when a guess of the same form of the right hand side doesn't work then um, we would just guess a new one by multiply it with a t so let's try so we will try a particular solution of the same form as the right hand side multiplied by t okay and distributing the t into it we'll get a t to the power 3 plus bt squared plus ct. Now let's work out the derivatives. If I differentiate y once, I get that t cube becomes t squared with a 3, and t squared becomes 2t, and t becomes 1. So we get that. And then differentiate this one more time, and then t squared becomes another 2t, so we get this term. And here we just get to be, and the constant term is gone. Okay, let's put that into the equation. So this will be the second derivative, minus 3 times y prime. This we just plug in what we had on the previous slide. And now let's collect like terms. And we see that there is a there are terms containing t squared. We collect that, we see that there's only one term. So we get negative 9a for t squared. And then let's collect the term with a t. So I have a 6a here, and then another term here that is negative 6b. So we have that in front of t. And the rest are constant terms. So we have a 2b, and we have a negative 3c, and that's that. Okay, and then this must equal to the right hand side. Now you see um, we get back the t squared term on the left hand side by multiplying the previous guess with the t. Okay, and now the left hand side is a polynomial of degree 2, so is the right hand side, and we can set the coefficients equal to each other term by term. Okay, so let's compare the coefficients. So for the t squared term, we get negative 9a equals 3, which we write here. And then for the t term, because there's no t here, so this one is 0. And then the constant term must match, so we got that one. Again, three equations for three unknowns and three linear equations, which is easy to solve because we see that we can do it in a sequential way. We can solve the first because it only contains a. We'll get the solution for a. Plug the a in here, and this equation contains only b, and we can solve for b. And then put in the a value, or actually only the b value in here, we can find the c value, which is here. Okay, so again, I'm a little, little bit brief. You can pause and work things out. It should not be hard. Okay, now we can plug in the values of capital A, B, and C and have a particular solution, which is t times A, negative 130 squared, and then B, negative 130, and C, negative 8 ninths. Okay, so let's do a summary. Okay, for the um, non homogeneous second order equation, if the right hand side g is a polynomial of degree n, let's say you can write it like that. That's a, a general form of polynomial degree n where these alpha um, i's are given coefficient. And then we're interested in a um, particular solution, that is, the form of a particular solution that would work okay, for this equation a y double prime b y prime c y equals g we want it to be a genuine second order equation so this uh, 
This term shall not vanish, therefore we specify A is not zero. Then the form of the particular solution should depend on the numbers B and C in the following way. Okay, there are um, three cases. Case one, C is not zero. Then you would guess the same form as the right hand side, that is a polynomial of degree N. Okay, let's use capital A. So it's capital A N T N plus dot dot A one T plus A naught, where these A's are to be determined. So that's the first case. That's the case where everything works. And the second case is uh, the second example we had when C is zero, but B is not zero. So the term Y is gone, but the term Y prime and Y double prime, they are present. In that case, this form does not work. And uh, what works is uh, multiply it by T. Okay, so write out in detail is T times this um, polynomial form. And there is a third case, which um, we did not go through an example, but probably you can conclude very quickly. If not, I encourage you to construct an example for yourself and verify that. So that is the case where both C and B are zero. So the Y term is not there and the Y prime term is not there. And then basically you have Y double prime equal to a polynomial. In that case, a particular solution shall be t square times a polynomial of degree n, which is the previous one, which is this one, multiply further by another t. Okay, and putting in the expression for this polynomial, a here for the sake of completeness, and this will be the form. Okay, so again, I did not give an example for this last one. You can easily try one, like y double prime is a polynomial, and you try to find the form of a particular solution, and you will be convinced that this form works. Okay, so um, that is uh, all I want to say for this topic, where um, the source term is a polynomial. And, uh, and next time we will look at even and different functions to put on the right hand side and see how to handle those situations. Okay, so that's all. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.